like artists. I like talking with artists. I like talking with people. I like exchanging ideas. I like seeing things as they happen. I like figure, fumbling my way through and figuring it out as I go. Is Quebecois art, where does it fit in in the world? That's a very big question. That's a long stick you must have. <laughs> <laughs> or it's a very short one that's <laughs> very deep. <laughs> there are we call follow up things and stuff like that. Yeah. But I figured just start with No, sure, start, yeah, yeah. Start yeah, there yeah. and see where, where well, it goes. Um I read a really interesting quote uh by uh an LA artist who was associated with Tiny Creatures, uh, that independent ven venue that existed very shortly. And he said, um, uh, you have to do your MFA where you expect to be an artist. Like that's, and he was talking about, like he was an ex, he kind of accidentally found his way into, into that scene. Um, but he'd studied on the East Coast and he, and he moved out there after doing his MFA. So, um... So if you think about how Quebec art dec is, is decimated around the world, because that's really how you can, if you want to, you can compare it two ways, right? So there's one way you can compare Quebec art to the rest of the world. It's just like our knowledge of the rest of the world's art and our knowledge, like as Montrealers uh, and Quebecers, and our knowledge of, of war, art of, of around the world. So then you can do like a qualitative comparison. This artist A from Quebec does this type of work that's, as far as I'm concerned, just as good as artist Z from better. Yeah. Or better. And why doesn't this artist get his due? That leads us to the second type of, of comparison is what is the the weight of Quebec art in the world? And you know as much as I do, very, very it's a bit it's half a feather. Uh, if that. Um, so how does how does how do you correct whose responsibility is it to correct that does it need to be corrected that's also a question that i find really interesting is that what is the real need here what are we talking about when we're saying like what is what is our definition of like a successful international career and how can it apply to a local artist in our in our community and um uh, and if and, and if we do figure out how it applies then does it what does it mean what does that mean? What does what does that recognition mean? Um, so all these so that these are questions I kind of like deal with uh, a lot. Um, I try to to I always find that um, the artists are the best one are the best ambassadors of their work. They're the best networkers. They're the best salesmen. They're the best promoters. They're the best philosophers of their work. They're the best everything with their work. Um, so that's on a strictly personal, like experiential way of dealing with the community and their artists. Now the whole sociological uh, framework that this, that this personal interaction and opinion falls in is more, far more complex. Because you have those pillars, you know, the art market, critics, which is a very weak pillar institutions and curators uh, all of these pillars kind of and the, 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 the network of peers artists communities around the world that interconnect through different types of uh, structures and institutions DIY or other but they're peer-minded so these how do these and I'm sure I'm forgetting probably an aspect but regardless these are just gives you an idea like how do these things interconnect and how do you get on what bandwagon, and is it a bandwagon, is it a community, and da 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 What does social, what does, this, what does this, the, the social aspect of, of interaction within and between these pillars, uh, what does that lead to, what needs to be done to get there, um, and so on. So these are, so these are questions that Quebecois artists need to, to ask, and need to, to, that they need to sort of, do I want to engage with that or not? Montreal's a great town to be in a studio and to just go out with friends, check out a band, go back to the studio, send out some applications, check it all out, 
That's mm -hmm. fine. Get a show in a couple of years. Send applications to Truck Calgary. Mm -hmm. Then maybe I'll, maybe I'll go check it out. Or I'll just send, I'll, well, if I get the show, I'll FedEx to work. I'll make something mm -hmm. for it. And you can do that, and it's fine. And you're not making a lot of money at it. You probably have a day job, and that's fine too. And you're just doing your thing, and, you're, and your practice is hopefully evolving, and it's being uh, hopefully challenged, and, and it's every time it's shown. And you're getting feedback. Not always the case. Actually, probably more often than not, it isn't the case. It's kind of pack up the stuff, goes back to the studio, and you go back to the studio. So uh, that's kind of the situation as I see it. Now, is that a good or a bad thing? Well, it depends what you do with it. If you decide to say, I have this amazing opportunity to have a cheap studio, a relatively cheap studio, by New York standards, by Toronto standards, Calgary standards, Vancouver standards, Paris standards, Paris, Yugoslavia. Maybe not. <laughs> I, 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 yeah. <laughs> or, yeah. Then you have to live in Yugoslavia. Yes. Yes. Serbia and whatnot. Uh, but, um, yeah, so the, the, how, how so you, we have this situation. So what is this opportunity? What is, what, what, is this an, op is this an opportunity? Information travels so much, you can be up to date with an RSS feed of maybe, 10 websites and you're really up to date like you'll know everything you'll be you'll even know what people's faces look like you'll know what power brokers what they look like what they wear where they're hanging out you'll hear gossip you'll be you'll be plugged in whether or not so you know but you're not engaging so but were you to engage you have the intel but you're not or you choose to you use that that this this thing as a sort of like this 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 parallel universe that is your studio uh, in Montreal to gather information and intelligence to go out and maybe you move to New York eventually and you know who everybody is and you know what doors to knock on to and you have like-minded friends that are around that can introduce you to other people and so on and so forth. Uh, and you create a community or you enter a community. It just depends when you go at what point and we do that here. And decide, you know what, there's not much going on, let's just do something. Because I have the opportunity, I'm going to just open my studio, and I'm going to hang out with friends, and I'm going to show other friends, and we'll see what happens, and maybe we'll get a bit of attention. And maybe people will come, type of thing. Or maybe not. So there is, it's like a, a variety, because there isn't that much, pre there isn't like a market pressure to uh, produce. You can kind of produce at your own rhythm, and you can. there's a great liberty of being an artist in Montreal. Now, what do you do with it is a whole other thing. Like, how do you take advantage of the granting system? Do you really have super moral quarrels about, like, oh, getting grants from the federal government is such a pain, I don't want to deal with it, and I'll never get it anyway, and I don't want to have to write grant writing style, they should just accept me for who I am. Like, what to what degree are you willing? You know, it comes down to, like, what are you willing, what do you, what do you want? What are you willing to do to get it? That type of deal. And Montreal is a town where that question can be asked 24 seven. Mm -hmm. Well, what do you want? Like you're complaining, but what, what do you really want? Like, and if that's the case, what are you willing to do to get that? And once you get it, what do you do? <laughs> so yeah, I find it interesting that you sort of place the onus on the, the artist. Ah, uh, not just the artist, the community. Mm -hmm. it's, got about, it's gotta be about the community. And I think like a lot of it has to do also, and the artists are the most important element of that community. This is mm -hmm. artists that make art. This is what they do. I, like, I can I can get really mad at rents going up and for studios, but I'm not going to be. I'm going to protest passively, mm -hmm. but I think it's up to artists to like, you know, this is their livelihood, and they have to whip the community into shape to defend their interests. Okay, because now I always come at it from the, the side that yeah, it's the institutions that sort of are the sort of big brothers, uh, yeah. which want us, which want them, the, the, not stakeholders. The giant mommy yeah, the, the, nursing the, 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 nurse, the children. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. And that's yes. where I am. This but then we have to put on our daddy hats and then <laughs> <laughs> crack the whip. Mm -hmm. No. Um, but uh, yes, within our realm of effective action mm -hmm. and what we do best. What we do best is put on good shows, put up, put together catalogs, and 
uh, uh, create like a, a sense of mediation between the broader public that comes here and the people that we're trying and the content that we're trying to communicate to them. So, um, in that sense, but I, and this is also a sense of effectiveness. How effective is the museum in doing things that we know artists do better? Um, I can't get uh, somebody into uh, uh, um, uh, a community that's not here mm -hmm. uh, that would facilitate their career. I don't know who those people mm -hmm. are, and I don't, and I'm not an agent. Um, but uh, if it's a, if the work is makes it falls in the priorities of what the institution wants to you know that whole that whole schno, uh, schnozzle of craziness that is an institutional programming direction and whatever and we put together a really good book and gives them the tools to like get a press kit together you know and and if we can get the, the uh, if we can get the word out that the show is something's really important happening here and that it get it has a broader um, a broader impact to more people that it has happened it is happening come and see it well then that's 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 something it's then after that though but then it's done and then what like uh we'll get another word do it again yeah exactly then we and then it's and then that's the thing we don't we our lasting relationships are kind of short-lived they're like three years at the most and then it's see you around but we do like you on a human level, I like, keep staying in contact. I stay in contact with a lot of the artists that I worked with because I believe they're really privileged situations of, of exchange of ideas. As well. But the, the but the institutional role within that is always I feel I feel it's 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 it. I would be suspicious. I think don't you know? I think that I think that artists are always the I think artists are always the best. Really, and I like working with them, and I like we collaborate as much as we can with uh, like this whole thing with the Brooklyn thing, like trying to be part of a local scene more. And the idea is that we do do things, it's just that often they're not promoted as or perceived or presented mm -hmm. as being things that are part of the community. Mm -hmm. Too often they're presented as being sort of a window onto a community, a very passive threshold mm -hmm. between an artist's community, an artist's community, and the public. When in fact it's not really it's not this idea of a division it's the idea of like the whole thing and we're just part of it and like we just do on a different level what APO did the last weekend mm -hmm. you know they bring people to art mm -hmm. and we 